Hey, yeah, pleasant good day, everybody. This is Sports Time News. I'm Joe Borgen. This is going to be a quick series preview of the Henderson Silver Knights versus Colorado Eagles. As the Silver Knights have the Rovi of Jones, Cotter, Bertie, Quinn, Leshin, um, Ronsberg, and others down there. Obviously, the Roviev doesn't have the most experience. Van Bertie is a good experienced guy to have in house because you need to have that mixed in. I said that in all my other series preview videos for the AHL. You can't just have a bunch of guys that are the rooks in the league. You have to have those guys mixed in. They also have Gage Qu Quinney, who has also been around for a while, played with the Wolves and the Scranton Penguins. So, those guys mixed in. Plus, they, of course, have others as well. I'm just naming a couple veterans on each team. I'm not going to sit here and name the whole thing to sit here for seven hours. But they have good guys mixed in as well with the great youngsters like Pavel uh, Doroviev who is a very talented netminder, plus they have now, obviously, uh, because the Vegas Golden Knights won in the playoffs, and he played spectacular to round out the season for them. Wasn't He still showed some holes at the NHL level in stopping certain shots, but you expect that from a guy when he's still growing and is an undrafted guy, but Logan Thomas uh, was really, or Logan Thompson, excuse me, was really good in this season in both levels and is really progressing spectacular for them. Ferguson did well as well for them. Patera also did well and did well in his NHL debut. So they got goaltending galore down there. And even Isaiah Seville did well as well. And two of those guys are working in Seville and Patera. Thompson's in his second full season. So Ferguson's also a rookie that did good. So they have the goaltending there. Uh, obviously, I would have to envision they're going to go with Logan Thompson because obviously he's the most advanced of all of their netminders. But when it comes to the defense, well, there's no problem there either Um, when it comes to the Henderson Silver Knights. As the Henderson Silver Knights on defense have Muromanov, who's a very good defensive defenseman, but a great offensive defenseman. Um, Daniil Muromanov, Peter Dela. De Laboratoire, excuse me, uh, who's a better in the defensive zone than offensive zone, but really can pass the puck pretty well. Derek Pouillot, who I thought the Phantom should have kept, but they got rid of. A guy that's good in both zones, that can skate a little bit, and a, a guy that I've always liked as an AHL defenseman. Uh, Caden Kornsnack, uh, Ian McCaution, Braden Pascal, Zach Hayes. So they have good depth on defense there. I think this is honestly... <clears throat> A series that the Henderson Silver Knights are going to be able to give the Colorado Eagles a run for their money because they have a very, very, very good put together team themselves. It's just obviously, do I think they're going to beat the Colorado Eagles when it comes to the end and it's all said and done? No, I don't think that's going to be the case. There's a reason why there was a 10 point separation of these teams. But I think the Silver Knights are going in the right direction. And I do think they have a chance because it's a three-freaking-game series. Anything can happen in these three games. They make them really interesting. So I do think they have a very good chance. If Tom, if Thompson excuse me, steals the first game, they could. But with the skill of Kiefer Shearwood, Dylan Sakura, who are more of the veterans. Then you have Mikel Maltsev there as well. Jason Magna, Martin Kout, who's still growing but great at that level. Gene Luke Foodie who was a very good youngster. I mean, they just got the veteran prowess there combined with the very good youngsters in that Colorado Eagles system for the Avalanche, who still have obviously very good, um, excuse me, developing prospects. Uh, Sam Paul Ronta, um, Bukudge is also good, Alex Bukudge. Um, so, I mean, yeah, there's, there's just not much but good things to say about the Colorado Eagles. And then on defense, they have one of the best veteran AHL um, defensemen in Jordan Kroos, who's great offensively and very solid defensively. As well, they also have a very good defensive defenseman, in, well, two in Rob Hamilton and Jacob McDonald. And then Dennis Gilbert, solid on both ends as well. Um, obviously, Barron, um, I believe, is up, so I don't think he would be in there. And then Doust uh, is more of an ECHL guy, but won the defenseman of the year, so maybe he can come in and be a surprise guy. Who the hell knows in the playoffs at some point? Uh, Keaton Middleton was also good for them. So I would definitely lean the Colorado Eagles here. They're definitely the deeper team. I mean, they go six deep in having guys over 20 points on defense with 
guys in Hamilton and uh, McDonald who can play great two-way games um, over 20 points. And then in Cage, they got Eustace and Noonan, who started off the year really well and then has had some moments of uh, not being as sharp. Um, but I, I think in the end, he's going to be fine and he'll be able to step up enough in the playoffs. Um, obviously, he just needs to be able to control the rebounds a little bit better and learn how to kind of kick the puck out to the sharper areas of the ice that it can that his defenseman to get to it and right, not right out into the happy zone for the uh, other team. There's goaltenders like, for example, Zane McIntyre, uh, Pat Nagel from the ECHL level that came up to the AHL level this year, Alex Lyon, all those guys that know where to kick the puck so they get it to spots like behind the net or to the side or out of play when they hit it with the blocker and not into the happy zone for the other team to crash for the rebound. That's kind of what a Noonan has to learn, but he seems like a pretty good tank-type goaltender that can be a good goalie when it's all said and done. But if I gave the goaltender battle, I have to give that to the Silver Knights, and that's why I would say this series is going to be really close because I think at this point they win that goaltender battle. I can name three goaltenders on their team, for God's sakes, that um have a chance to be pretty damn good if they step if they get put in the playoffs in Patera, Thompson, and um, Ferguson, and then they even have Seville, who played well as well, so you can even throw him in there. The only guy that didn't was Kelly, um, uh, and um, that's fine, because everybody else was great out of the other four. So I would have to give them the matchup there, but I have to give it to the Eagles. They just have the deeper team, the more skilled team, and that's why I would have to give the slight nod to the Colorado Eagles, even though people, I think, think this is going to be a wash of a series. I don't see it like that at all, because the Henderson Silver Knights have the great skill with the Doroviovs. They have fantastic people in net, and that's what it takes in the playoffs. They have a good defense, too. They don't have as much point production from their defense, minus from the Laborator and especially Muramanov for the points production-wise, but they have guys like Hayes, who plays a very good defensive game. They have guys like Makashin, who plays a very good defensive game. Korczak, for uh, being a rookie, plays a very good defensive game. So, I think this team's more pushing in the right direction, the Silver Knights, but they're like a year or so away from being where the Eagles are now to be able to contend more for the colder. And that's kind of where... I, <coughs> excuse me. That's kind of where I have it. And this has been the series preview for the Henderson Silver Knights and just Colorado Eagles, where by a smidge, because I think the Eagles are at least a year ahead of the Silver Knights and just have the deeper overall talent, I would go with the Colorado Eagles, but it's not by much because I do think the Silver Knights are really building up a very good team here and have continued talent that's going to come overseas and via the draft this year, as well as guys that haven't been signed yet that are playing in either college or the juniors that the Knights are going to continue to sign as well. So I think they're moving in the right direction. They're just not where the Eagles are at yet. Peace out, everybody. Stay safe and subscribe to keep the channel growing to the goal of 250 or more by the start of June.